After nearly two decades of dedicated research and development, Dream Chaser is poised to leave its first mark on the space race. Unlike previous instances of delays, this milestone is no joke, as the Dream Chaser Vulcan rocket launch vehicle has successfully completed its inaugural launch. With recent positive updates on Dream Chaser's progress, anticipation builds for the launch of this next generation space shuttle. When is this historic event scheduled to unfold? How will it unfold, what challenges lie ahead for Dream Chaser's flight, and why is this flight of particular significance to NASA? Join us in today's episode of Alpha Tech as we unravel the details. Embarking on its developmental journey in 2004, Dream Chaser has navigated a complex path from concept to flight. Initially designed with a space shuttle-like configuration to transport cargo and passengers to the International Space Station, Dream Chaser faced setbacks when SpaceX, Boeing, and Northrop Grumman outcome competed it in 2014. Consequently, it was regulated to future cargo missions. Securing the Commercial Resupply Services 2 contract from NASA in 2016, Dream Chaser faced numerous challenges on its path to space. Originally scheduled for its maiden flight in 2019, the launch encountered multiple delays, exacerbated by the global COVID-19 pandemic's impact on supply chains and continuous delays in the launch vehicle, ULA's Vulcan rocket. The maiden flight of Dream Chaser named Tenacity faced additional hurdles with the delays in the Vulcan rocket's launch. However, with the successful Vulcan launch on January 8th of 2024, the outlook for Tenacity's upcoming schedule has become more optimistic. Despite the impressive performance of Vulcan and the BE-4 engines, potential challenges loom in the next launch. It's worth noting the explosion of a BE-4 engine in June of the last year, a story that Blue Origin appears to downplay. This engine was part of a pair due to be delivered to ULA customers in July of 2023, but the explosion delayed the delivery. This incident, though seemingly concealed, raises questions about the operational reliability of the BE-4, even with its recent successful launch. Regardless, Blue Origin must fulfill the demand for Vulcan's engines, especially for the planned mission transporting tenacity scheduled for April of 2024. While Dream Chaser faced a myriad of challenges on its journey to space, the latest developments shed light on its current status. As of November of 2023, both Dream Chaser and its cargo module companion Shooting Star have reached NASA's Neil Armstrong Test Facility. This facility is located at NASA's Glenn Research Center in San Dusky, Ohio, a remote testing ground. The two vehicles will be stacked together in a launch configuration and undergo rigorous environmental testing, starting from the Mechanical Vibration Facility, or MVF. These tests will subject them to harsh conditions simulating the vibrations experienced during launch on the world's most powerful spacecraft, Shaker Table. Following vibration testing, Dream Chaser will be moved to the Propulsion Facility for thermal vacuum testing. It'll be placed in a vacuum and exposed to low ambient pressures, as well as low background temperatures and replicated dynamic solar heating, which simulates the environment the spacecraft will encounter during its mission. This facility is the only one capable of testing full-scale upper-stage rockets and rocket engines under simulated space conditions and conducting altitude hot fire. After completion of testing at Armstrong, Dream Chaser will be shipped to NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida for launch preparations. When it debuts, Dream Chaser and its Shooting Star cargo module will launch with wings folded inside a payload fairing aboard the Vulcan Centaur. Once the vehicle is in orbit, the protective fairing panels will be jettisoned, followed by the deployment of solar arrays mounted to the cargo module and wings. As Sierra Space conducts in-orbit demonstrations for certification during the initial mission phase, ground teams at NASA's Kennedy and Johnson Space Centers will join those at the Dream Chaser Mission Control Center in Louisville, Colorado in monitoring the autonomous flight. The far field demonstrations will be carried out before Dream Chaser arrives at an invisible boundary around the ISS known as the Approach Ellipsoid, which measures two and a half by one and a quarter by one and a quarter mile. 
The Far Field Agenda includes demonstrations of attitude control, translational maneuvers, and abort capabilities. Then, working with NASA's Mission Control, Sierra Space will carry out near-field demonstrations. They include activation of light detection and ranging sensors, and responding to commands transmitted by the ISS crew. The commands involve an orbital lab retreat and holding its approach at distance milestones of 1,083 feet, 820 feet, and 98 feet. While Dream Chaser is holding for a final time at 38 feet, a grapple fixture on the spacecraft's cargo module is to be secured with the ISS nearly 60 foot long Canadian robot arm under the command of space station astronauts. Ground controllers then will take command of the robot arm to berth the cargo module portion of the Dream Chaser to an Earth facing port on the ISS US segment's Unity or Harmony modules. Once unberthed from the ISS, Dream Chaser can land as soon as 11 to 15 hours. 26 reaction control system thrusters will provide the deorbit propulsion for a return at Kennedy Space Center's launch and landing facility, which was once used by NASA's space shuttle for return to Earth. Honestly, the flight of the world's only winged commercial spacecraft is highly anticipated. It signifies the beginning of an entirely new era in space transportation, paving the way for an unprecedented era of commercial space economics. As Dream Chaser undergoes a battery of tests at NASA's Glenn Research Center, propelling it through rigorous simulations of launch conditions and space environments, anticipation is building for its first official mission with NASA in 2024. With the help of the Shooting Star Service Module, Dream Chaser can deliver up to 5,500 kilograms of pressurized and unpressurized cargo to the space station, including food, water, supplies, and science experiments, and then return to Earth. Compared to Dragon cargo missions that have been averaging around 1,500 kilograms of pressurized cargo and sickness with a higher load of 3,700 kilograms, the Dream Chaser is a bit of a powerhouse. It can get this big because it has a separate cargo module module that is specifically designed to be filled with about 3,400 kilograms of waste from the ISS. This garbage module will be released during descent and burn up into the atmosphere. On Dream Chaser itself, it's set to return up to 1,800 kilograms of work. Additionally, designed for high reusability, this vehicle reduces overall cost, providing quick turnaround times between missions. The ability to lift off on top of multiple launch vehicles and land at a wide variety of runways make Dream Chaser a flexible option for reliable transportation. After leaving the space station, the Dream Chaser cargo system also offers disposal services via the Shooting Star transport vehicle. Once separated from Dream Chaser, Shooting Star burns up safely in Earth's atmosphere. The spacecraft was originally designed as a crewed space plane, in part under NASA's commercial crew program, capable of carrying up to seven astronauts to and from the space station and other low Earth orbit or LEO destinations. Dream Chaser is 30 feet or 9 meters long, roughly a quarter of the total length of the space shuttle orbiters, and again, can carry up to seven crew members. Just wanted to emphasize that point. The crewed version of Dream Chaser is approximately 85% common to the cargo system, limiting primary changes to windows, environmental control, and life support systems. Additionally, the attractiveness of a lifting body spacecraft, like a plane, is that the environment for re-entry is a lot less harsh than a capsule. A capsule comes down at 4 or 5 Gs, some of them land on land, most of them land on water, and takes you days to get your critical science back, but it starts degrading as soon as you get into to the gravitational field. Dream Chaser offers the ability to enter gently, and because this space plane has no toxic propellants, as soon as it lands, you can go right up to the vehicle and start pulling cargo. We can land at any runway where a 737 can land, which opens up the whole world to us. In a nation where you don't have a space program, it would cost billions of dollars to build a space program, but Dream Chaser can offer a turnkey space program and land in the country for the cost of a satellite launch. As Sierra Space advances its Dream Chaser program, we are left to ponder the myriad possibilities the spacecraft holds for the future of space transportation. With its unique features, Dream Chaser stands out as an appealing choice, yet the crucial test lies in its actual launch and demonstration of capability. Abilities. Will Dream Chaser live up to its promises and carve a niche in space travel? Only time will tell. 
Wishing Sierra Space all the best on this groundbreaking journey. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comment section down below because your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. So for that, we thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you again next time.